Chapter Sample Collection Topic Complications of Venipuncture At the end of this training the learner should be able to identify the various types of complications of venipuncture troubleshoot of failed venipuncture understand the various causes of hemolysis of samples and understand how to handle venipuncture complications complications of venipuncture the complications can be local general or sample related local complications can be improper positioning of needle rolling of vein puncture through vein needle bevel obstruction collapsed vein partially inserted needle tube pop off anticoagulant reflux tunique not removed excessive bleeding and petechiae general complications can be nausea vomiting fainting attack or syncope seizures inadvertent arterial puncture and nerve damage sample related complications can be hemolysis clots in anticoagulated specimens and platelet clumps Ideally the bevel of the needle should be fully inserted at 15 to 30 degree angle If the bevel of the needle is too steep it is potential for the needle to completely penetrate the vein possibly resulting in the formation of hematoma If the angle is too shallow the bevel can get occluded by wall or partially in the vein or the tissue that also can lead to the possibility of developing a hematoma rolling of the vein when a vein is not well anchored prior to puncture it may change position or roll after or during the process of needle insertion when a vein rolls the needle may slip to the side of the vein without even penetrating it reposition the needle in such cases and check for blood flow if there is still no blood flow remove the tunique ensure patient's hand is open withdraw the tube and remove needle from the patient's arm consider an alternative site on the opposite arm sometimes the needle penetrates through both walls of the vein when bevel is inserted at a steep angle Occasionally when the angle is too low the needle lies against the wall of the vein preventing free blood flow in such cases pull back slightly on the needle if there is still no blood flow remove the tunique ensure patient's hand is open withdraw the tube and remove needle from the patient's arm avoid rotating needle more than 1/4 turn as it may damage the vessel wall Sometimes vacuum draw of tube or pressure created by pulling the plunger of a syringe causes a vein to collapse blood flow slows and then stops as vein collapses collapse early on may be due to insufficient tunique pressure after about 5 ml this may be due to excessive tunique pressure this may also occur when tunique is applied too close to the site experiment with tunique pressure increase or decrease as appropriate if still no blood flow remove the tunique ensure again that the patient's hand is open withdraw the tube and withdraw the needle if bevel of needle is not totally within the lumen of the vein blood will leak into the surrounding tissue causing a hematoma and reduce blood flow into the tube release the tunique in such cases and withdraw the needle immediately apply firm pressure to the site for several minutes ask the patient to maintain pressure for prolonged periods if possible or request the assistance from nursing staff as appropriate 
Occasionally, during a venipuncture, a needle sleeve may push the tube off the needle slightly as a result of which blood flow stops. Pop-off can be due to excessive lubricant on the non-patient end of the needle which is a manufacturing fault or a faulty Emerson sleeve also a manufacturing issue. May also be due to operator due to insufficient force applied to the tube to ensure it is completely inserted onto the non-patient needle. To re-establish blood flow, re-advance the tube to the end of the holder and maintain it in this position until the tube is filled. If the tube is not properly oriented and tunica is suddenly released, pressure inside the tube may momentarily exceed that in the vein. Blood might then flow back into the patient's vein from the collection tube and tube additives like EDTA have the potential to cause adverse reactions in patients. To prevent reflux, the patient's arm should always be maintained in a downward position to ensure the collection tube always remains below the venipuncture side and fills from bottom upwards. Prolonged tunica application increases the risk of reflux. Reflux is of great concern when non-sterile tubes are used because of the potential of transferring harmful microorganisms to patients' peripheral blood involving bacterial contamination is much more of a concern than reflux of additives as the latter will be greatly diluted in the blood. Failure to remove tunica before withdrawing needle maintains pressure inside the vein. Blood can spill out of the vessel once needle is removed, creating a biohazard risk. Patient anxiety, hematoma, tunica tension should be reduced as soon as the blood starts flowing. Sometimes during phlebotomy, there can be an inadvertent arterial puncture. Arterial blood has a bright red color and the tube fills very quickly. In such case, remove the needle and hold pressure for at least 5 minutes. If bleeding happens for longer than 5 minutes, alert the nurse and notify attending physician. Continue pressure on site as long as necessary to stop bleeding. Wrap bandage securely around the arm over gauze pad and leave it on the site for at least 15 minutes. Red spots under the skin may be due to the tunica left on arm or may represent excessive capillary fragility in some patients. Inform the attending physician and avoid or limit use of tunica application in such patients. Avoid major nerves. Contact with nerve tissue with a needle can cause sharp and immediate pain and may also induce an involuntary reflex action such as pulling the arm away from the needle. Both the median nerve and the brachial artery lie close to the basilic vein. Excessive or blind probing while performing a venipuncture can lead to permanent injury of the nerve or artery that may result in a legal action. Phlebotomy is a meticulous task and any error in performance can have consequences. So far we have learned about the local complications just to recapitulate which are improper positioning of needle, rolling of vein, puncture through vein, needle bevel obstruction, collapsed vein, partially inserted needle, tube pop off, anticoagulant reflux, tunica not removed, excessive bleeding, petechiae and nerve damage. Amongst the general complications of phlebotomy, nausea and vomiting are quite common. If the patient is feeling nauseated, make the patient comfortable as possible and instruct him to breathe deeply and slowly. Apply cold compressors on the patient's forehead and notify personnel trained in first aid. If the patient is vomiting, same steps as in nausea have to be followed and the patient has to be given water to rinse out the mouth. If the patient faints, notify personnel trained in first aid, lay the patient flat or lower his head or arms. If sitting, loosen the tight clothing and cease the phlebotomy procedure. 
One of the main concerns in such situation is to ensure patient safety against fall or injuries. The need for usage of phlebotomy chairs with armrests and dissuading specimen collection while the patient is standing should be re-emphasized. Such events also increase the risk of needle stick injury due to unexpected movement of the patient and panic response. Needle should be removed carefully. Important to seek help from other healthcare worker, it is better to make a note of such occurrence on a requisition form. In case of convulsions and seizures, call for help and seize the phlebotomy procedure. Have someone hold pressure to side and notify personnel trained in first aid. Lower patient to the floor and clear space to prevent injury and do not restrain the patient's extremities. Specimen related complications like hemolysis, clot in anticoagulated sample and platelet clumps can happen due to improper collections. Hemolysis, rupture of RBCs or red blood cells releasing its constituents affects several analytes like RBC, hematocrit, potassium, LDH, AST, ALT, iron, phosphorus, proteins, magnesium, calcium, etc. Possible factors affecting hemolysis can be veins. Fragile and easily traumatized veins can lead to hemolyzed samples. Prolonged tunique application, venipuncture site cleansing procedure, needle readjustment while taking the sample, needle gauge if the lumen is too large or smaller than 23, syringe collections, and forceful transfer of blood into tubes. Too vigorous mixing of tubes using too great a vacuum, for example using too large a tube for a pediatric patient or using too large a syringe. Underfilling a tube so that the ratio of the anticoagulant to blood is greater than 1 is to 9. Reuse of tubes that have been refilled with the hand with inappropriate amounts of anticoagulants and Abruptly stopping a draw, for example, withdrawing a 6 ml tube when half of it is filled. All these factors can cause hemolysis. Clot in anticoagulated sample may impact the processing of the sample by causing its rejection, cause instrument downtime due to probe clogging and error in test results. The causes of clot in anticoagulated sample are overfilling of tubes, inadequate mixing, difficult draw, low filling of evacuated tubes. Platelet clumping can impact results by causing reduced platelet count and increased RPC count. The causes of clumping are poor mixing and overfilling additive tubes. Thus, to summarize, phlebotomy is an art to master. If not performed in a perfect way, may lead to complications in the patient and the sample, thus leading to poor patient outcomes.